Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Active Town Channel. My name is John Zimmerman, and yes, I am back in Paris uh, to check in on how the build out of the bike network is uh, coming together as well as uh, explore some more of the wonderful people oriented streets. There's lots of pedestrianized streets and other, I guess, traffic calm streets. <laughs> There's a whole plethora of them around. We're in the uh, second arrondissement, and uh, much of what I have seen thus far has not really changed that much since 2022 when I was last here. Uh, so we're gonna go search for some new infrastructure and see what it looks like. So let's turn the camera around and have some fun. Rolling down Boulevard de Strasbourg towards Boulevard de Sebastopol. And we're at a pretty major uh, protected intersection here, which is pretty cool. You can see the protection right here. We're gonna head on down this way. I can't remember if I have spent much time riding on this particular street with this particular installation of protection. I stayed very close to this neighborhood, but I can't remember if this installation was in in 2022. I'll have to go back and look at the footage. Um, as you can tell, it creates for a very, very comfortable transition through here from a very busy two-way cycle track. You can probably tell that uh, the road was very wet. Ah, yes. So this is interesting, yeah, you've got a transition into basically a mixing zone, so it's really only protected in that area there. Then we have a mixing, and then we get to uh, protection again. So, quite interesting the trade-offs that are going on. We've got our green, off we go again. Ah, uh, the joys of loud, noisy automobiles, including police officers and sirens. <laughs> Pretty hilarious here, the restaurant Indiana. I remember that from 2022. So didn't really have any major uh, purpose in heading down this street. I just couldn't recall whether I had ridden it before in this state. Can't remember if this was new or not, so I'm going to head back down to the uh, Boulevard de Sebastopol, the busiest cycle track in the city, at least I believe it used to be and then uh, and then head uh, down to the Rue de Rivoli have some fun down there very interesting uh, electrically powered quads look like rental vehicles Sort of like an urban assault vehicle. <laughs> very, very strange to see that here in the big city. All right, we're gonna take a left up here at this next uh, thing, but I do wanna point out this nice little transit stop area. Very well done. And then we're gonna cross over to the other side of the street. We're waiting for our little green light. We got it, and off we go. Mm. 
and we are heading down to the Boulevard de Sebastopol, the intersection also with uh, Boulevard de Strasbourg. And uh, it's actually a really cool intersection because it is a protected bike infrastructure intersection with uh, um, concrete, or excuse me, I should say, um, they're most likely not concrete, they're most likely granite barriers in there for the protection. So we'll get a nice look at that intersection. We might just roll straight through and then come back around and do the left turn back onto the Boulevard de Sebastopol, which is a two-way cycle track. So this is an intersection of two one-way protected bike lanes and a two-way cycle track there on Boulevard de Sebastopol. And again, you see the elevated part of the cycle track here to where there's a transit situation. And we see the big structure here, the monument. This is the Porta de Saint Denis. So, again, pretty massive area there. Plaza, public space. Last night, there was just an absolute party going on. Today is June 22nd, so yesterday was June 21st, the longest day of the year, and it's a huge, huge party. Okay, so here is that intersection that we were talking about, and you'll notice up ahead on the other side of the pedestrian crosswalk, we have our uh, protected infrastructure right there in the middle so very much a dutch inspired protected intersection nicely done in granite i'm gonna go ahead and get to the other side queue up and get ready to go it's really quite an extraordinary little uh, bit of infrastructure here this intersection And as you can tell, there's lots and lots of uh, cars in this area, but everything still feels quite comfortable rolling through here. Very, very well done. Now, I actually do want to uh, swing around. I'm going to become a ped pedestrian here and go across. I want to head back down this other direction so you can see what it feels like heading through that same intersection from the opposite angle. And we'll be able to queue up here. We do have a car approaching from the right, but they're going over that way. And again, we've got our bike signal right here. Many of these bike signals really are just kind of, you know, questionable in terms of uh, the need for them. Honestly, most of these could just be unsignalized. The Dutch are doing more and more unsignalized types of, of intersections, especially when it comes to bikes. They're all moving at slightly slower speeds, much slower speeds, really. And people can really work it out. Again, here is our intersection with our busy two-way cycle track and we're gonna flow our way right on down to the Rue de Rivoli. So it'd be Look great. Up, and again, for those of you who watched my footage from 2022, you know that this is a busy, busy street with all sorts of humanity happening, <laughs> including uh, pedestrians all over the place, which we love to see, as well as lots of cars, way too many cars, buses, delivery vehicles, and everything else. But it's really, for the most part, 
a very comfortable environment. And I say for the most part because, as you all probably know by now, if you've watched many of my uh, on-bike interviews and on-bike ride-alongs, I travel at a very, very relaxed speed. I'm very upright. I make eye contact with everybody. So I'm not pushing hard. I'm not trying to make it from one place to another, point A to point B, fast. I'm just kind of taking in the city oftentimes, you know, filming, making eye contact and nodding to those pedestrians to just go ahead and uh, yeah, the way I like to roll. We see some uh, pretty major protected intersection infrastructure here. Folks, most of the bikes, people on bikes are just rolling right through it, regardless of the light. Um, there's not very many cars out this, this afternoon, just afternoon. At this point, during rush hour, this place is just jam packed with folks. Um, yeah. I'm of the mindset, just like that delivery guy is, a scan, if it's safe, go. Again, that's kind of the approach I take for it. Use your common sense, make sure it's safe to go. If it's a stoplight, stop, scan, if it's safe, go. If it's a stop sign, very rarely see stop signs like that. You know, use it as a yield. And of course, whenever possible yield to pedestrians stepping out. I don't always catch them, but again, I'm trying to make eye contact with them too to kind of get an idea of what they're doing. In a little bit of the zeitgeist of riding a bike here is a fair amount of um, just wildness and chaoticness like back there the motor vehicles are blocking the, the bike path and so and then we do get our green and you're you're making your way over so everybody might pretty much just gets along And this is a really good uh, example here. We've got the intersection with one of the very, very busy pedestrian public realms. And so you kind of just make your way across. Um, they actually do have a red signal at that point. If it were green, they would definitely be stepping and, you know, expecting their priority. Again, another intersection with a pedestrian priority area. You can see the pedestrianized mall area here. Typically what happens is you get a pretty good natural break in the pedestrian activity and you're able to make it across, no problem. And last night was a massive, massive party. Streets were completely packed. And uh, have to keep an eye out for a lot of broken glass out there. Pretty devastating. You run over some of these big shards. 
this is the intersection now with the Rue de Rivoli. And again, this is one of the widest cycling infrastructure installations that has taken place. And you can see that they've basically reduced the motor vehicle travel lane here to one lane. Uh, I believe it's taxis and buses only. And then the rest of the space has been turned over to people on bikes and people walking. We won't go very far down this because I want to take us all the way the other way to the uh, Las de Bastille and then loop around on the canal for a meetup, a meeting with Dr. Billy Fields and Mark Kramer. But I thought we'd uh, roll through this area just a bit. Give you a sense as to what this is like. Again, this has not changed materially since 2022. It was pretty much at this state at that time. So, yeah, not much else to say about it. It's still quite, quite comfortable. As you can tell, it's a very rich environment from a pedestrian perspective. This will take folks right on down to the Louvre and many other institutions. But we're going to do a U-turn and head back the other way. At peak commute times, this is absolutely packed with people on bikes of all ages and abilities. There's some schools up this way, so we do see some kids, which is kind of cool. One of the things I miss on the bike signal kind of approach is I love it when we have bike signals that kind of give you a countdown and or a little warning signal to let you know that you're about to get your green. I really kind of like those. Nice little feedback. And again, all ages and abilities. On the bikes, little daughter with her dad. Always great to see. Again, uh, we've seen a little bit of this um, earlier on this trip where we have the center lane parking facilities here in the middle of the boulevard. And in this segment of the, uh, the bike lane, it's a two-way cycle track right next to each other. see this the Paris 2024 everybody's getting ready for the Olympics in the coming weeks I don't know that I can give him a ride I suppose he could stand on the, the back of my luggage rack I do have a weight limit on that thing <laughs> I don't think he would I think he'd max it out actually now that I think of it this is a segment of the Rue de Rivoli that I think is just really quite special I do tend to see more families down in this portion of it 
again this is not in the center of the main intense tourism areas destinations again all of this infrastructure was in place in 2022 when we were here so none of this is new again this is another stoplight that just drives me nuts absolutely makes no sense to have a person on a bike have to stop there's absolutely no cross traffic no pedestrians crossing yeah again cities stop it with your bike signalization like that only use it when it's absolutely necessary for these pedestrians i just nodded let them know that they should cross and they did again very very silly this one clearly is is there because the cars were getting a green light and turning so i get that but still if you calm the cars down to a point where the drivers are proceeding at extremely low speeds like 15 miles per hour then you know and, and again that's about 30 kilometers per hour this just equates about to 18 i guess it's uh you're going at such a slow speed it's it's human speed you can make uh, collisions can be avoided again look at this stoplight there's just absolutely no reason for it so all right i'll stop i'll, I'll stop bragging on bike signals we love to have them when we really need them but you got to get them done right and this is a very very intense area pedestrian wise so i know that they're leaning towards that which is completely understandable but bikes are not cars we can't come to an easy stop and acceleration anywhere near as easy as a motor vehicle i just love this this is so nice and again looking at uh, looking at the youngins out here such a great environment guy on a scooter here he's zipping around <laughs> is that definition of free-range kid maybe okay we're coming up to one of the monster monster roundabout areas this is the Place de Bastille in my estimation this has been one of the worst traffic sewer areas let's check it out and see if it's been improved i'm seeing at the moment a lot of people on bikes but yeah it looks like we're just waiting for the cars to go It followed the flow over to here. Again, nice elevated 
cycle track integration with the uh, transit area there and transitioning into a parking protected lane. Got about a half hour before I need to meet up with my crew, so I'm gonna plug that address into my wayfinding and uh, make my way there. I'm digging this little stretch though, so let's just keep rolling for a little while longer. It's very nice. You also notice just how chill it is once we get away from the noisy cars, motor vehicles. There's just so much stress associated with cars. What's the saying? Cars ruin cities. Okay, we are gonna head back to the Plaza de Bastille. We're sort of in a bus, bike, shared lane here. Relatively quiet. We do have the protected bike lane on the other side of the street, which is what we rolled down earlier, which is very nice. This has so far been just fine. I have no buses immediately behind me or in front of me at the moment. Not a huge fan of bus bike lanes, but when absolutely needed and necessary, they can be useful. here yeah I think it's this th street right here this looks like a major market area off to the side here we see we've got a bike lane we'll try to get to. Getting to it's the issue. Now that we're here, we're happy. Nice curb protected and parking protected bike lane here on a big one-way street on this side. And then you've got your big market area in the middle there. Apparently it's not market day here on Saturday. Not sure which day is. And again, we are heading to a meetup spot to meet with my friend Mark Kramer, who lives up in Clichy, and Professor Billy Fields. Both of these gents have been on the podcast in the Active Towns channel a couple of times. Always good to connect with folks. In person. IRL as the kids say, in real life. Just something special about that. Alright. Here's a stop. Light. Looks like a pretty big busy cross street, so... Again, using my wits crossing when it's safe to do so 
and you saw that I did get a green light. And off we go. Again, some more of the trash from last night's party. Yes, it's all over the city. Still trying to make sure we don't uh, get any uh, major broken glass here. Love this little uh, green space right there. Beautiful park. Very nice. And again, this uh, space off to the left here. Space off to the left here where we had uh, the market. This area is a nice linear green park now. That other area was just all paved over, but this is a lot of natural surfaces over here, lots of uh, greenery. So again, one of the linear green, green spaces in the area. Incredibly important. Looks like we're at another one of our questionable stop areas prior to probably a more intelligent one. And here we go. Again, none of this infrastructure we've been on today is particularly new as memory serves. Pretty sure pretty much all of it was here in 2022 may not have ridden all of it but it all looks pretty old oh, here's a market that is happening Swing the camera around so you can see one of the people-oriented streets there. You see it is pedestrian priority. A lot of these side streets in Paris, that's the main treatment that has happened gradually over the years. A lot of these main streets are still traffic sewers. And apparently during market time, the bike lane doesn't exist. But the side streets, especially the narrow ones, have really been transformed into people-oriented spaces. Very nice. Nice integration of the docking system for the Valib bikes with the protected bikeway here. I'm here a few minutes early, so I'll shut the camera off as I wait for my guests and I spend some time checking my tires. It may not matter, but I'm gonna give it a try. All right. Yay, Chaprun. Nice little rainbow crosswalk here. I love it. Okay, there's Mark. There he is. Hello, sir. Yeah, man. Good uh, to see pretty you darn good. How to, good to see you. Yes, hey. once again. 
And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.